Hey folks, Mike Clark here with the Pragmatic Studio. We just finished building this single page view app for a course, and we used the view CLI to generate the initial app and serve it up during development. So let me show you how we did that. If you scroll down on this page, you'll see the command to install the CLI, whether you're using NPM or Yarn, and I already have it installed, so I'm ready to create a new project. When you install the view CLI, you get the view command, and then we'll say create, and the name of the app will just be my app. And then depending on the app you're building, you can either go with the defaults or manually select features. And for FishHub, we went ahead and manually selected the features we wanted for that application based on its requirements. So just select that, hit enter, and then we'll arrow down and select different features. We went with Babel. We also used the router because this is a single page application. For client side state management, we wanted to use uh, Vuex, so we selected that. And then we used SAS, so we need a preprocessor for it and then we just went ahead and went with the standard linter formatter. Then go ahead and hit enter and you'll get a couple more prompts. Do you wanna use the history mode for the router? Sure. And then again, we use SAS. You could use less or stylus if you wanted to. We went with SAS. And then in terms of the linter, I went with ESLint plus prettier. And then we'll go ahead and let it lint on save. And then it asks if you prefer placing the configuration files for some of these features you've selected in dedicated config files or in package.json, I like to have them separated out in their own config file, hit enter, and we'll go with that. And then you can save these selections as a preset if you want to, if you're gonna use the same selections in a future project, I'm not gonna do that here. All right, then it starts creating the project, which we sped up through the magic of video, so don't run out and buy a new computer thinking yours is too slow. This is gonna take a minute. Now the nice part is, without fussing around with any configuration files or Webpack or any of that stuff, we can go ahead and build and serve the app on our local machine. We just cd into the my app directory and run npm run serve, just like it tells us to do. Cool, so it's running on this URL. If I hop over to a browser, go ahead and paste that in. Well, there's the app, and you notice it has two pages, a home page and a really simple about page. Okay, so what did the CLI generate to make all this happen? If we open it up in VS Code, we see it generated two directories, a public directory and a source directory. And inside the source directory, you'll see an initial set of files based on the features we selected. So because we chose a router, we get router.js and a Vuex store, we got a store.js. So let's take a peek at the package.json and you see it's already added the dev dependencies. For example, because we're using SAS, it knew it needed a dependency on node SAS. It also has our runtime dependencies listed right here. Because we chose the router, we get the view router, and we're using Vuex. And then it gave us three scripts, serve, build, and lint, and serve is just the alias we used to actually fire up the server. So what's nice is all the batteries are included and everything is configured using sensible defaults. So this generated some scaffolding, but where do you start building on that scaffolding? Well, let's dive a bit deeper into the application. In this public directory, you're gonna put any static assets that you don't want processed by Webpack. And you see there's a generated fav icon and also an index.html. And inside of there, you'll see this div with an ID of app. And that's where the view app gets mounted. You also see this comment about build files will be auto-injected. We'll look at how that happens a little bit later. The source directory is where you're gonna put all your application code. The asset subdirectory contains static assets that will be processed by Webpack and they gave us a logo by default. And then the components directory is where you're gonna put any components and the views directory by convention is where you're gonna put files corresponding to specific views or pages in a single page application. Now this directory is only generated if you chose the router feature. Also in the source directory, we have a handful of loose files. So let's start with main.js and that's the entry point of the application. You notice it imports view. It also imports the app component the router and the Vuex store. Then it creates the view instance, which renders this root app component and mounts it in the div with an ID of app. And we saw that in the index.html file. You notice it also injects the router and the store into all the components. So this sets the view instance in motion and you really never need to change this file. So let's take a look at this router. It's in router.js. And this defines the routes and mapping to components. So as you add new pages or views to your application, you'll add new routes. And then in store.js, we see it initializes a Vuex store and gives us a starting point to fill in the state, mutations, and the actions of the store. 
So back in main, it injects those two things, router and store. Then it renders this root app component. So let's have a look at it. It's right here, app.view. It has a template section. This is what's gonna get rendered in the DOM. And then it has some styling for that template right down here. So in this file, you're gonna to need to update these router links as necessary for your application. And to see how these router links work, let's open the view dev tools in the browser. So we're on the home page, and if we look in the app component here, we see that it's rendering the home component. If we click on about, then that's gonna to change to render the about component. So what happens is this router view line here changes based on the current route. Right now we're on slash about, which is rendering the about component, so it gets rendered right here. If we go back to home, our route is just slash, which maps to the home component, and so this is getting replaced by whatever the home component renders. So let's have a look at that home component. It's under the views directory, home.view. And back over here, let's close the view dev tools. So in this template section, we're just gonna add an H1 right here. And we'll just say my app. And when we save that off, well, this thing gets dynamically reloaded. We see my app, which is really handy during development. You notice it also renders this hello world component, passing it a message as a prop. So let's go ahead and change that. We'll just say howdy here. And again, it dynamically reloads. So let's have a look at this Hello World component. It's in the components directory because it's a part of a page or a piece of a page. And it just renders the message in an H1. And let's just go ahead and take out all this other stuff. And you notice it also has a script section which declares that it expects a prop named message of type string. And in this script section is where you'd put any JavaScript that's related to this component. So to summarize how everything hangs together, we have a component for each page in the views directory. So any page you wanna to add to the application, you would add a file in here. And then those pages can use components for parts of a page and those go in the components directory. And those can be nested arbitrarily deep. And then in router.js, we have mappings between paths and components. Now at some point, you'll likely wanna deploy your app to a production content server. And thankfully the view CLI streamlines that too. To build the app for production, we just use npm run build. And behind the scenes, it uses Webpack using a configuration that's optimized for most applications to build a production-ready bundle. So all the vendor libraries end up in this chunk vendors JavaScript file. And then our application code is in the app JavaScript file. The CSS is in this app CSS file. But you also notice that it's generated a separate JavaScript file for the about page. Well, that's because if we come back over here and we look at the router, you notice for the about page, it has this comment about route level code splitting. And so for the about page, it's generating a separate chunk, which is lazy loaded when that route is visited. Now you don't have to do that if you don't want to, they just give you an example if you want to generate separate chunks for separate pages. Anyway, all this stuff is optimized and minimized and all that good stuff for faster loading speed. And you notice that all the build artifacts are put in the disk directory. So if we come back over to VS Code, open up the Explorer, there's this new disk directory here. It has a CSS directory, there's that app.css file. Our images got put in the image directory, then there's a JavaScript directory, and now that has bundle.js files and source map files. And then you see the fav icon and index.html. So what happened was they were in the public directory down here and they just get copied into the top level disk directory. So if we open this index.html file, I'll just make this a bit bigger so we can see it, you'll notice that it's auto-injected stuff. So it's injected the app.css file. Down here is that div. This is where the view app is mounted. But notice it's also injected the chunked JavaScript. It's also injected a script tag to load app.js. And when the browser evaluates this app.js file, well, that has all the application code, which renders the app component that then mounts to this app div. So now you just deploy the contents of this disk directory to your favorite static file server. Now, if you wanna preview the production build locally, you can use any static file server. For example, I'm gonna use the serve npm package. I can just say serve, that's the command. Dash s just tells it it's a single page application, and then I give it the name of the directory containing all the stuff I wanna serve, which is that disk directory. And then it automatically copied this URL to my clipboard, so if I come back up to the browser, pop that in a new tab, well, there we go. There's our application being served from that disk directory. 
Anyway, I hope that helps you feel more confident about using the Vue CLI as a starting point. Now to see how we use Vue in real applications, check out our courses. Have fun!